Okay, I'm going to bring up my guest. My guest is a very esteemed writer. Uh, she wrote this amazing book. It is called Thinking Inside the Box. It is about the history of the crossword puzzle. Very, very cool. This is very interesting. Some of you guys are like, oh, boy. But this is a... Listen, the crossword is great. And this book, actually, believe it or not, this is probably a testament to her writing, got me to start playing the crossword puzzle. <laughs> and it's, it's the best. And we'll talk about all that as we go. She's an incredible writer, written for The New Yorker, written for all over. This book is great. Please welcome to the stage, Adrian Raffel, everybody. I'm going to give you a mic. All right. How do you guys like that uh, royalty-free music, huh? Pretty cool. <laughs> I'm thinking ahead, thinking ahead. All right, here we go. <clears throat> How you doing, Adrian? Great. All right, don't worry. That wasn't one of the questions. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. I, <laughs> know. I was so prepared for that one. I know. I, they're going to get way more difficult. Uh, no, that's not true. All right, so thank you for doing the show. Thank Thanks. you for coming along. Um, I read your book. It's great. Thinking Inside the Box. Really, really great book. Uh, round of applause if you guys play the crosswords. <laughs> wow, okay. That's a lot. Okay, so I, I, just to start off real quick, I think this is an important, it's so interesting when I, whenever you read books like this or, or want to read books like this and things, it's hard to avoid it. Why today, with everything going on in the world, why do crosswords matter? <laughs> do they matter? <laughs> okay, I guess that answers that. You're, you're not selling your book well, I'll tell you that. No, 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 I think crosswords matter yeah. like more than ever. I think like, um, I think a testament to it is like my book sure. came out on March 17th, 2020, a fun, oh, wow. a, fun <laughs> a fun day in history for us all. Um, but that was like a moment when crosswords suddenly, like I thought they mattered tremendously. I yeah. just, you know, spent so much time living and breathing inside this little grid. And then I, they came out in, the pandemic when all of a sudden like nothing made sense at all except a crossword puzzle That's so true. you know yeah. and like what's safe to do when you're stuck inside your own little box you know it's really safe to do in a pandemic a crossword puzzle <laughs> yeah yeah of course you had to wash them before yeah uh, right right right, right. And wear, as long wear as a you mask while you did it leave them in the garage for sure a few exactly days. yeah that's interesting well uh what drew you to games oh my god <laughs> um I mean, speaking of like therapy and going back to one's family, um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing games uh, kind of my whole life, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, that's sort of how my family communicates with each other. Mm -hmm. It's like through games. Um, but I'm really, really interested in words and stuff. And that, but then I started like sort of realizing, oh wow, like everybody has some kind of relationship with the crossword, whether you like it, whether you don't like it, whether you're indifferent to it, whether you're like, that is for somebody else, not for me, whether you're like, that's for me. You just like, you see it around, everybody has a relationship to this thing, but I was like, nobody's talking right. about it. Like, right. what is it? So I was like, I have a relationship to it, but I don't really know anything about it. So I'd been like playing various kinds of games my whole life and then started realizing kind of, like, oh, wait, like, there's this thing. What is this thing that I've been doing? Yeah. Well, no, that's true. It's a good point. I mean, people, our natural instinct, I think, is to make games out of things. Yeah. To okay. make them more, to make anything more accessible and to pass time. It's kind of a, like in New York. I mean, I'm sure you guys have played all kinds of games in the street. Like, there's a famous, there's all these famous New York games where, like, what could I get for my rent in other cities? <laughs> <laughs> that's a fun New York game. Yeah. Or how much money would it cost for you to drink that subway water? You know, like... <laughs> Those games that you play just to pass the time, just standing around. Um, well, it's interesting that you bring that up, though, and we're talking about New York. Uh, what, what, make, what, what do you think made this crossword originate in New York? Why do you think it, it has such a, I guess, home here in New York? I think, I think it's such a great point. I think, like, if you look, if you walk around this city, I, I mean, you, you scored 142 on the thing just to, you know, you, <laughs> oh, the test. Oh, please, go on. <laughs> um, but this whole city yeah. is a grid, right? Yeah. It's like, I mean, especially Manhattan is just like a straight up and across grid. And so, and then um, once you start sort of, you go outside and you start like looking for grids, this, you know, Manhattan's designed on a grid, and then you just sort of start seeing grids everywhere, right? And you can't help it. Like, 
Um, now you're gonna hopefully my my dream is you sort of look around and you see like oh a QR code that's a grid like <laughs> you see just like every everywhere around you is grids 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 especially in New York and I think like so the crossword originates in 1913 here and it was actually um, a, a, and I think that really part of it is. Well, part of it is like literally the newspaper editor needed to fill space in a newspaper, which is really great to me. It's just <laughs> like, wow, <laughs> like I just need something here. I can just fill it with some blank space. But I think that like there is something, um, whether or not, you know, like New York, that played in the origin, uh, the origins, or I think it is important to the way that the crossword becomes really popular is that it becomes popular in this urban dense space. You're on mm. this stuff where you're always going through like across and down in your entire life, and then you get to go through it in the crossword too. Yeah, I know that's interesting you bring that up too because uh, it, 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 it hit this kind of like uh, huge, it hit like its peak, uh, really popular in the 1920s, I remember yeah. reading in your book, and yeah. people were wearing like crossword themed clothes, Incredible. and it was like a, yeah. it was like a huge <laughs> thing. Everyone played the crossword. Yeah. And, and what, it's interesting because this is obviously before social media, it's also before you know, the computer and all this stuff. And, and how do you think that's affected the popularity of the crossword? The fact that, that the fact that now there's computers and video games. And all, why do you do you think that it's really affected? I guess also people's experience with the crossword and how they actually process it. Oh, hugely, yeah, and yeah. I think it's affected it on many levels from the construction of the crossword itself right. to the way that. Uh, people engage with the actual game the way that you're on your phone with your app engaging with it versus you're doing independent paper. And then the like another layer of crosswords and computers is the community around crosswords communicating on Discord, on X or whatever we're calling it, on like, <laughs> you know, on on all the various kinds of channels out there. And there were you know. There were cross there were crossword listservs in the early 2000s that have now just like kind of multiplied and exploded. There's um, there's so many various ways in which the computer. I think that, like uh, um, it's interesting because there was sort of in the early 2000s crosswords were saving print media because right. people were buying the print newspaper just to get their crossword. It's just a little junky. You need to actually like yeah. get the crossword. So that was a saving print media. And now the crossword has exploded in the computer realm, both in the way that people create crosswords and in the way that people use them and then talk about them. Yeah, and you were talking about how it saved print media. It's Simon and Schuster you mentioned yeah, in your yeah. book. Actually, that was like the first big hit they yeah. had as a as like a publishing house was a book of crosswords. Yeah. Uh, it was it was their first huge hit. But they were scared. They were like, uh, it was yeah. the first book that the like Simon and Schuster published. But they were yeah. like. Oh, wait, we don't know if this is going to make us any money. Yeah. So we'll just call it like a weird other name. We're not going to actually call it Simon and Schuster. We're going to call it Plaza Publishing. Yeah. And then and then it made them like a ton of money. <laughs> yeah, never know. Those little happy accidents. And speaking of which, crossword was an accident. The word crossword yeah. was an accident. It was a typo. It was supposed to be word cross. They had a typo one week and they just kept it. They and it's a crossword. Crossed words. They, cro they literally crossed words yeah. and it became uh, crosswords. Uh, look at this, guys. Uh, how much there is to the, this? So this is interesting um, because you were talking about. What I want to get on that since you mentioned it, the community yeah. of, around this. So technologies obviously help that people can communicate and get in touch with each other. But I thought it was interesting as well as technology, like in the late '70s, yeah. you had the ACPT start. Yeah. Uh, so there, in case you guys don't know this, uh, there's a great documentary called Wordplay yeah. from 2006 about crosswords, and there is a tournament that has been going on since the late 70s uh, in Stamford, Connecticut, at the Marriott in Stamford, Connecticut, where people from all over the world converge once a year to have a crossword tournament. You can already picture what this looks like. You can already picture what it looks it's like. It's exactly what you're picturing. Yeah, it's, a, it's probably crazier than what you're picturing, but it's, it's complete, like, but watching this documentary, you're just like, oh my God, we're gonna be okay. You know, like, there are people like this who will do this every year regardless of what's going on in the world, and it's a beautiful thing, but I was hoping you could speak a little bit to that kind of community that's built up around the crosswords. Yeah, and I think it's like really that kind of sweet spot of like 
um, kind of a, a, a niche group in a way, the people who are really dedicated enough to go to a tournament, to compete in a crossword tournament, what does that even mean? You go and you like sort of take the SATs for yeah. like a while. That's can. real psychopath <laughs> behavior. They're like in like dividers and they're taking tests, timed tests, it's crazy. But yeah. what's also like really wonderful about that yeah. tournament now is like then after, like in between like each of the timed crosswords, you'll have people like doing other crosswords. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, but it's beautiful. It's like, what do you do to fill gaps of time where you don't really have enough time? You just like, oh my, I do a crossword in between crosswords, and then afterwards they'll play other games sometimes. You know? yeah. yeah, no, that's one hundred percent true. And you talk about this in your book, and I, I think that to me, I started playing the crossword because of your book. I'd never really played it, and I started playing. I was like, wow, this is really great. And I think the thing that's so great about it is that it, you really, it really is, it's an escape, yeah. but it's also not an escape. Like you're in a different world where you are challenging yourself, where you are thinking and, and you completely are just engulfed. Like, and I think that's kind of life. We're always pursuing things where we're totally present, you know, yeah. whether it's a partner or a job or a sport or whatever. We want something that where we feel plugged in. Yeah. And it's kind of inevitable that you get plugged into the crossword. There was a great uh, quote you had in the book where you said, uh, anyone playing crossword, it signals busy people idling or idle people busying themselves. <laughs> and I thought that was really interesting because Thanks. it's true. It's like for, for busy people, you're like, this is a cool way to pass the time. But people who are just lazy, whatever, this is me being busy. You know, it's on a, But it was really good. I, I was hoping you could speak to that, I guess, nature of the crossword. Thanks. Yeah, yeah I think that it is true that you can like, if you, if you need it to be your relaxation, it yeah. will be. If you need it to be your work, it will be. It really hits that kind of sweet spot. But also it, it kind of, and I think this is also why crosswords do, are so appealing in, well, all times, but especially in times of kind of external chaos. Maybe that's just permanent time now. But um, because they, um, they're a kind of escape, but they also like construct a full narrative for you. You're like, okay, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna be, in, I'm in a crossword. I know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna be really frustrated. I'm gonna like be yeah. sort of angry. I'm gonna like be thinking, and then I'm gonna have a beautiful aha moment. It's gonna be like, I'm gonna just get this beautiful main character energy. Yeah. I'm solving everything. I'm great. And then it ends. And if you're playing on like certain apps, then you get the little music that comes at the end. And you're like, this is amazing. I've done it. So I think you, be, but but I think starting in a moment of frustration and pulling yourself towards a moment of triumph is actually more appealing yeah. and feels like more like work <laughs> or yeah. it feels like more like re-accession re than if like, then the kind of adult coloring book thing. What no shade on adult coloring books, love them, but <laughs> but it, but it's like you kind of just get soothing to soothing yeah. there with a the crossword. At least you get like frustration to triumph. Yeah, and it, it, and it kind of just replaces whatever real real life frustration you have Absolutely. at the time. You know, you go from being angry or whatever at your life or whatnot, and then you just you know next thing you know you're stressed about you know what what was the name of the Night Rider car. You know, three-letter word for the name of the Knight Rider car. You know, it's like, oh, it's Kit. Oh, there you go. And you get that beautiful, like, amazing release, you know. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, th so that, that being said, though, uh, you were, you were kind of hit on this. There, there was a discussion in the book a little bit about whether or not a crossword is art. Yeah. So, because there is a lot of, like, creativity. And there are themes. Yeah. There are words loop around the actual crosswords and everything. What do you think about that? Oh, I mean, I'm, I think crosswords are absolutely <laughs> art because I think that they're the, uh, kind of a, a medium that also people who create them are also like responding to different um, elements. You can have, a, you're having also a dialogue with the person who's solving. So you're kind of implicitly, both in the way that you're constructing the grid, you're inviting someone in, you can do that in many, many different ways. And then the clues, you're, 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 it's a dialogue. You're mm -hmm. speaking to the audience and, and it's a form. And I, I love a form, <laughs> and I think that, yeah. but I think I love a form because it's also, um, it invites you to engage with the rules and it invites you to play with them differently. So yeah, crosswords, I mean, also, also crosswords start in 1913, so they kind of start right in the pocket of a lot of like modernist art. So I think, and I think that's important to thinking about kind of like how they grew up too. And I think it's because they're also playing, they, they grew up in this moment of playing with um, grids and, and like a, a world that's, you know, 
like right in between wars and we're we're you know like well sorry right before World War One but anyway like we're, yeah. we're we're I think it's really important that they kind of grow up as a fixture of 20th and 21st century art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's and it's actually kind of fascinating. I mean, if you look at like the history of some of the crossword puzzle, I thought you, you talked about it in uh, in the book, I believe, or it was in the documentary. Either way, like uh, the new the famous 1996 New York oh, yeah. Times. Yeah. Uh, there was a there was a New York Times crossword where there was the 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 clue was something like this. Per it was during the election, during the Bob Dole Clinton election, and it was like this this person was the ne will be the next president, and the way it was written, Clinton or Bob Dole was the right answer. And then yeah. everything that stemmed off of it was also, was also adaptable to those answers as well. So like, so like the B and C of Clinton went to cat or bat, you know, and they, those all worked. And you just see something like there, like that's, that's creativity. These aren't as simple as you think, right? And it's also, it makes you see your world around yeah. you in a different way. And then yeah. what else is art, right? Yeah. So it's like that kind of quantum crossword, yeah. right? That's like, is, is is both like an art form that pushes the crossword itself and then it's like makes you engage with your world differently, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, there's also, I guess, too, I mean, it, it does seem like it does kind of, you know, coming from comedy, you know, yeah. in like in improv and all that, you have these you have these exercises that are supposed to get you ready, like imp improvisers before shows, they do these things to get their brain going and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And it seems to me like there is part of that with the crossword where it just gets you thinking of words and digging into your memory bank and all these things. And I was wondering, wondering if you could talk about if I would talk about that but also the benefits because I guess there there's a question of what what uh, health benefits there are oh, yeah. you know mental and psychological benefits there are to the crosswords uh, I was wondering if you could talk about that yeah people um, love to call the crossword like oh if you do the crossword you'll you'll stave off dementia and there, yeah. <laughs> there are there are lots of like um, actual scientific studies out there about um, looking at whether people who do the crossword regularly, whether that helps with their memory or saves off dementia, it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of impossible to study because like off like it's sort of like sure yes no I don't know you'll you'll lose your memory at some point maybe the crossword helps kick the can down the road a few years maybe not but but like I do love this one study they did of a guy who um it's the guy who if you've seen the movie Memento it's the person oh, yeah. who like um is the actual historical figure who that movie is based on basically he has like no short-term yeah. memory he, like repeats his day every day but um they did a study with this guy he like loved crosswords and um, even though he couldn't actually like recall things and like he, he lost his like memory in like 1957 so he shouldn't know that JFK was assassinated but he was able to like he did like the same they, they sort of diabolically gave him the same crossword like day after day after day <laughs> and then um, he was able to get the clue that JFK was assassinated and they were like do you know this? And he's like, yeah, I know it. So like somehow, but he couldn't really explain it, but somehow like it was sort of paving a long-term memory track in his brain that I don't, I don't know that yeah. much about the neuroscience, but, but it was something, something, something cool was working right. and they used crosswords to figure that yeah, out. Yeah. I, re I remember that story in the book, like they were, they, they like actually, it's almost like they circumvented the part yeah. that's for short term memory, which is what was, was gone was in wild. his head. Yeah. And they were able to circumvent it through this kind of place where you solve puzzles and all these things. I thought it was, it was fascinating. Um, well, I guess that, that I guess that that also brings me to the, another uh, question: is all this all this too? Um, is there is also uh, a little bit of controversy around the crossword? There was a there was an article, a very subtle title of the New York Times crossword is old and kind of racist. <laughs> <laughs> very very subtle. subtle. They really want you to really clickbaity. <laughs> But it's interesting how, you know, it is, it, it is such a reflection of the society. I mean, it's everything from pop culture to art to history to everything. So it is kind of a reflection of society at any given time. But whose reflection, right? So it does, it does kind of, I guess, beg the question is like, well, who decides it? Who's it for? And there is this kind of back and forth as to what the correct answer to that is. Uh, and I was wondering if you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, sure. Um, I think in the throughout some of the 20th century, like um, the New York, once the New York Times, just to give a tiny bit of backstory, the New York, once the New York Times decided that it was going to have a crossword, which took a beat and it was like, 
we don't need uh, any games, like our, our readership doesn't require games. And then um, in World War II, they were like, no, we need games. <laughs> <laughs> please, God, anything. Yeah. Yeah. We really need something, please. Yeah. Um, so once the Times decided it was going to have a crossword, it was like, we're going to have like the gold standard of American crosswords. And it has sort of since, um, like historically, kind of taken up that realm, but then the editors of the Times Crossword also, in many ways, they institute a lot of the rules that are very familiar if you solve American-style mm -hmm. crosswords, but some of the editors were kind of um, conservative in terms, not like necessarily politically conservative, but conservative in terms of like rule-bound right. white dudes, basically, who like um, a famous example is the word Oreo, O-R-E-O, -E is super useful in a crossword puzzle because it's four letters and it's got a lot of great letters that is super useful, but uh, before like the early 90s, it was clued as like mountain combining forms. They were like, no pop culture in crosswords. These need to be evergreen. They need to last forever. And like, what is pop culture? We can't have any of that. And I think that's really indicative to the what you're speaking to of like this sort of, um, idea that the crossword belong had to like be belong to a certain kind of culture and a certain kind of historical legacy yep. but then you look back and then you're like that's actually just like a lot of white dudes legacy yeah. so um in the early 90s when kind of will shorts took over the helm of the new york times editorial um like he became the editor of the puzzle. Then um, he's, by the way, he's like the Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. Uh, Will yeah. Shorts is like the guy, uh, the New York yeah. Times. So. The New York Times. Yeah. So like when he, so that's kind of famously he took over and made the Times kind of adopt more pop culture. Mm -hmm. But but cr other crosswords had already been doing that long before. And I think that like um, actually these days like um, there's been a lot of real attention paid to. Um, the crossword as a space that is much more inclusive. And, and it was starting to happen like as I was researching the book and as I was like, um, people were coming up and saying like, yeah, actually the crossword um, not only should, you know, not just be this sort of bastion of what is called culture, but actually should reflect and engage with all constructors, all community mm -hmm. members, and we can have, it's better for the puzzle to have more and more people in this. So like, um, there are the constructors and editors today are really, there's a lot of really great ones out there. Like actually yep. my friend Brooke, Brooke Husek is in the audience is very like, is that her? Uh, yeah, oh, she cool. was like an amazingly hey, inclusive, give it up for yeah, yeah. just a shout out to like cool. one of the most like inclusive crossword yeah. editors out there today. So I think there's like really, um, a movement like now, especially, um, and kind of in a pandemic, post pandemic, yeah. we don't want to think like, wow, we have this real opportunity yeah. to continue this medium into the 21st century, and how can we kind of keep it as a live, functioning human art form that is speaking to um, the most people possible in yeah. the most like rigorous and cool way? Yeah, I mean that's a, I mean you, something you don't think about when you pick up a New York Times, let's say the Monday which is the easiest, easy to who? Difficult yeah. to who? Yeah. You know, like someone may not know, you know, who the starting forward is for the, you know, whatever. So it's, you got to think of all these things. That's true. And, and you know what, guess what? In the New York Times, you get tons of yeah. comments. People yeah. get angry. They're like, yeah. why is this here? I don't know what this is. What are you putting this in? This isn't hard. This isn't easy. It's everything has someone complaining about it. So you have to make that decision at the end of the day. And that taps into, well, for who? What's the group we're going for? What's considered pop? What's considered not? It's all. It's a whole thing, you know? Yeah. So it's a very important, I guess, decision at the end of the day, which is kind of wild to think about. Uh, so next time you pick up the crossword, think about that yeah. when you're eating your, <laughs> you know, think about that when you're eating your croissant or whatever. All right. <laughs> uh, all right, so we got, I wanted to move to this next feature here. Let me go. Like, oh, it's time for rapid fire questions. Look at our faces <laughs> oh are God. on fire. Good lord! <laughs> all right, so these are these are lighter, hard questions. We talk about the crossword. It's great. So we want to get to know Adrian here. So we got some quick questions. We'll round out the interview with this. Let's do it. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. <laughs> What's the craziest thing you've ever seen in New York City? Uh, <laughs> uh, people like. <laughs> Trying to well, trying to trade me a joint for my eclipse glasses on the like eclipse. <laughs> Your eclipse glasses? Yeah, the day with the like solar eclipse. Oh. I, I had like gotten some like eclipse glasses. Some guy was like, 
yeah, do you want to join for those? <laughs> you should have just been like, smoke enough of those. You don't need these, baby. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. You'll be totally fine. Wow, that's kind of interesting. Okay. All right, well, let's keep it moving. Uh, all right, what's your favorite game to play? My favorite Outside game. of crosswords. What's your favorite game? Like, you know, we were talking about, like, you know, what's Rent Get You or whatever. Like, is there any, any board game? What is it? Boggle. What game? What's that? Boggle. Boggle. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wow. Wow, I did not know Boggle was that popular. It's amazing. Very enthusiastic Boggle fans here. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, we got all six of them here. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right, let's keep it moving. Uh, as a writer, as a, when you were younger, becoming a writer, all these things, whose career did you admire the most? Who did you want to have a career like? Oh, wow. I mean, um, I probably definitely, like, I mean, as a kid, definitely, like, a sort of... Um, Children's book author, like Lois Lowry, we're all dolls. Oh, okay, like, cool. You know, like you some read children's books, more like children's books. When I was like a kid, I was like just like I reread them so much, you yeah. know. But then I also like wanted to be a paleontologist or a geologist. Actually, right. when I was a kid, you know. <laughs> yeah, when you're like, a kid, you don't know any better. You're like, I want to be a fireman, a rock star, and a baseball player. <laughs> but I just like rocks. <laughs> right, exactly. There you go. Actual, yeah. I didn't want to be a rock star. I just wanted rocks. Just rocks. Actual actually, rocks. Actual rocks. Yeah. Well, that's uh, weird. <laughs> you know? no, I'm just kidding. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, all right, well, we're going to keep it moving. Here we go. <clears throat> if you couldn't live in New York, where would you live? Anywhere in the world. Paris. Paris? Yeah. Ah. Not right this second. I hear things are a little bit crazy <laughs> right now, but yeah, Paris. 2024 Olympics, Paris. That's where I want to live. So, 1924. Yeah, exactly. Paris. Yeah. Sorry, like. You might be able to get on the team in 1924. I mean, the, you know, just gonna run like a mile. You're good. Yeah. Uh, it's come a long way. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, doing flips and stuff. Okay. Here we go. I don't know what I'm talking about. He was like, "What are you talking about?" All right, here we go. If you, if there was a movie about your life, who would play you in a movie? I was just debating this. Um, so, Carrie Mulligan or Zoe Kazan or, or I don't know. Those are the two that I've got going on. <laughs> okay, nice. Carrie Mulligan. She was a. Was she the one in uh in that in the Noxzema commercials? Is that Carrie? No, I'm thinking someone else. Maestro. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I was thinking of someone else. I'm thinking of a Carrie though too, right? Does anyone remember the Noxzema commercials? Okay, I'm old as hell. Hey, what am I even at? <laughs> Everyone's like, what are you talking about? What's Noxzema? <laughs> All right. All right, let's keep moving. When did you realize you wanted to become an author? Oh, my God. I mean, um, unfortunately, always. But um, when, <laughs> um, when I was, like, seven, I, I wrote some, like, you know, little book <laughs> called uh, the, the Pretty Girl Who Was Smart and the Beautiful Girl Who Was Stupid. <laughs> oh, Wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> okay. I really can't make this shit up. It, yeah. <laughs> so like. I know you said this wasn't going to be therapy, I, but uh, <laughs> let's dive into that. Look, I mean, you asked me when I wanted to be an author. <laughs> <laughs> so I was not therapy. <laughs> nice. Okay, well, that's great. That's good. So you were seven and you wrote that book. Uh, she'll be selling that book after the show. Oh yeah. Uh, you can, buy, you can buy, pick up a copy. All right, let's keep it moving. Uh, okay, what what do you think is a good slogan for New York? <sighs> um, <laughs> the, the crossword capital of the world, obviously. <laughs> like, come on, I gotta sell books. <laughs> you gotta sell books. That'll definitely put a dent in the tourism, I think. Uh, which, uh, People which, love crosswords. They do. People I do, I do. love crosswords. That's true. That's true. Like, I hear that's true. everybody that's saying true. it. Okay, uh, what's your biggest pet peeve in New York? Um, I mean. It's got to be subway related. Like when sure. when the uh, when you're on the ones some subway and all like you're on the train and suddenly like some announcement comes over. It's like the D train is now the F train. <laughs> you're like I what? <laughs> I'm I'm being taken for a ride that I didn't yeah. know I was on. <laughs> no, it is, you're right. Subway is pretty subway related. I, I my speaking of subway, a pet peeve of mine is when it, the train's packed and people don't take off their backpacks. Mm. That drives me nuts, man. What you gotta be more aware, right? Some people in here are like, well, I do that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, don't do it next time. All right, let's keep it moving. That's good. That's good. We're gonna. Uh, so you were you were a, you're a poet as well. Yeah. We don't have time to really dive into it. So uh, where does the sidewalk end? <laughs> oh well. <laughs> how much time you got? Uh, yeah. How much time do you have? Yeah. You can. One never knows for the sidewalk. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> The side, does the sidewalk ever end? Has the sidewalk even begun? Mm. Think about that. <laughs> 
All right. All right. And we got one final question. By the way, uh, by the way, Adrian's going to be selling her book uh, over here if you'd like to buy Thinking Inside the Box. I really recommend it. It's a great book. But we have one more question before we wrap this up. It's an important question. Will you be my friend? Of course. Oh, thank you. I'm <laughs> blushing. Guys, give it up once again for Adrian Raphael. Thank you so much. I'll take that mic for you. And like I said, she'll be selling her book over there on the side when we wrap this up here.